Good evening. So let us start with the subject uh, CEC 358 underwater imaging systems and image processing. So in this unit 2 is optical image processing and the contents are given here and in this particular video we are going to see about color fundamentals, color transformations and interpolation. So the contents are first we are going to see a few definitions fundamentals and all the topics I have referred from the book Rafael Gonzalez. So this is the same book and with the color models only we can able to study the transformation. So for that uh, because our topic is fundamentals transformation but to study the transformation we need color models. So let us cover the color models also and then go to the transformation and interpolation. So what is the color? It is a powerful descriptor which simplifies object identification and extraction from a scene. It can be divided that is color image processing can be divided into two major areas. One is full color another one is pseudo color processing. What is full color? In full color the images are acquired with a full color sensor such as a color TV camera or a color scanner. In pseudo color processing the problem is one of assigning a color to a particular monochrome intensity or to a range of intensity. Here we are assigning a color to a black and white image. So that is false color actually. It is a false color. But a full color means actually acquired from a sensor itself is a color image. But here we are assigning a color to a black and white image. That is pseudo color processing. Color image processing techniques are now used in a broad range of applications including publishing, visualization and internet. First let us start with the fundamentals. So we all know that uh, Sir Isaac Newton discovered in, nine, in 1666 itself the beam of light is not white but it consists of continuous spectrum of colors ranging from violet at one end and red at the other end. As this figure shows the color spectrum may be divided into six broad regions. So as we all know it is a rainbow colors violet, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So the first one is infrared, I, these colors, okay, this visible light, it is uh, when it passes through the spectrum, this is called scattering of light, okay, this we all know. So as illustrated, this uh, visible light lies in between the range of, in the electromagnetic spectrum, it lies in between the ultraviolet and the infrared range. So a body that reflects light is balanced in all visible wavelengths appears white to be observer. For example, green objects reflect light with wavelengths primarily in the 500 to 570 nanometer range while absorbing most of the energy at other wavelengths. So here you see the wavelength spectrum. So green color it is having the wavelength of 5, 500 to 570. So it is... Uh, the wavelength, it is the actually the wavelength. So all other wavelengths are absorbed here. Only this particular 550 wavelength uh, lights are spreading. So we have that effect. So if the light is achromatic, its only attribute is its intensity. Achromatic light is what viewers see on a black and white television set. So that is no color, that is achroma. Chroma means color. Chromatic light spans the electromagnetic spectrum from approximately 400 to 700 nanometer. You see this spectrum. So here it starts from the visible spectrum. So this side ultraviolet, this side infrared, but here it starts from 400 to 760 nanometer. Three basic quantities are used to describe the quality of chromatic light source are radiance, luminance and brightness. What is radiance? It is the total amount of energy that flows from the light source and it is usually measured in watts represented by W. Next is luminance. It is measured in lumens. It gives the measure of light, amount of energy an observer perceives from a light source. Okay, light energy comes from the light source is radiance. Rays, we are telling na light rays. So that is it is coming from the source. Luminance means how much we are able to perceive that is luminance. What is brightness? It is a subjective descriptor that is practically impossible to measure. We cannot measure. 
it embodies a achromatic notion of intensity and is one of the key factors in describing the color sensation so this is a subjective descriptor subjective means it depends upon the human eye so only with the bright area we can able to see now under moonlight it is not very clear so that is uh, brightness is a powerful descriptor okay it's a subjective descriptor means so here the human eye is the subjects so humans are called the subjects of the nation similarly here it is a subjective descriptor so next it is a detailed evidence what it is 6 to 7 million cones in the human eye how the color is uh, perceived by the human eye it means we have in the eye we have in the retina cones and rods okay that is the receptors that is 6 to 7 million cones in the human eye can be divided into three principal sensing categories so these are all the cones and it has three principal uh, sensing categories that is red blue and green approximately 65 percent of all the cones are sensitive to red light 33 percent to green light and 2 percent to blue so that is shown in the figure so these curves detailing the absorption of light by the red green and blue cones in the eye so okay it goes peak colors due to these absorption characteristics of the human eye colors are seen as variable combinations of primary colors so it is the reason why we are taking rgb because human eyes has the ability and uh, it uh, has the effect these three colors are uh, the wavelengths uh, our cones are sensitive to these particular wavelengths so and the mixing of these three colors we are able to see as various different colors next to this uh, CAE it's a commission it is designated in 1931 the following specific wavelength values they pro uh, provided to three primary colors so and blue means it is for 35.8 nanometer green is 546.1 nanometer and red is 700 nanometer so we know the primary colors can be added to produce the secondary colors so you see these circles first three circles red circle green circle blue circle and uh, the interlapping region you see we have yellow cyan and magenta so what is this magenta a red plus blue cyan means green plus blue so that it is very clear from this figure itself these three colors are secondary colors mixing of three primary colors gives secondary colors and uh, subtracting uh, the, it produces the, all the mixing of all the colors in the center region you can see it is a white color a primary color is defined as one that subtracts or absorbs a primary color of light and reflects or transmits the other two. Therefore, the primary colors of pigments are magenta, cyan and yellow and the secondary colors are red, green and blue. A proper combination of the three pigments or a secondary with its opposite primary produces black. Next, the characteristics generally used to distinguish one color from another are called three characteristics are there so that we can able to distinguish it is blue color it is green color orange color how we are distinguishing based on these three characteristics brightness hue and saturation what is this brightness it embodies the achromatic notion of intensity what is hue it is an attribute that associated with the dominant wavelength in a mixture of light waves among the mixture of light waves which attribute which particular wavelength is dominant that is hue so okay particular color is a hue what is saturation it is the relative purity or amount of white light mixed with a hue color such as pink that means red and white and lavender violet and white are less saturated with the degree of saturation being inversely proportional to the amount of light added so saturation degree of saturation means inversely proportional to the amount of white light so hue and saturation taken together when we take with that color uh, hue means color particular dominant wavelength and saturation taken together they are called chromaticity and therefore color may be characterized by its brightness and chromaticity and we all know so for a particular uh, color okay the amount of red green and blue needed to form any particular color is called tri stimulus values and they are noted by x y and z and so that a color can be 
given by its coefficients. What is this small x, y, z and we can get. If you add all the primary colors, we get the, uh, it should be equal to 1. So, okay. Next, we will see about the models. So, we have color models. What is a color model? It is to facilitate the specification of colors. How to specify? Okay, for that we need standard in some standard way. A color model is a specification of a coordinate system and a subspace within that subsystem where each color is represented by a single point. In terms of digital image processing, the hardware oriented models most commonly we used, the more popular model is RGB that we know. What is the other model? CMY. CMY means cyan, magenta and yellow. Another model is CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. That is used for printing process. And uh, one more model is HSI, hue saturation intensity model. That closely, uh, this cyan, CMY model is for printing. But generally hardware oriented models, uh, RGB. Then for uh, humans to describe or interpret color, then we use HSI. Okay, HSA also has the advantage that it decouples the color and grayscale information in the image. Also, it provides the grayscale information. So, let us see one by one the color models. So, what is this RGB model? So, it is a 24-bit color cube. So, on the uh, three coordinate axis are given as RGB and the mixing of two coordinate on the other corners of the cube are provided by the cyan, magenta and yellow. So, on the center uh, axis point is black color. So, the gray scale and mixing of all together we get a, okay, sign magenta and yellow. That uh, mixing will give the white color, okay. So, this is the RGB model. So, main diagonal have gray values. The diagonal, okay, it has a gray values. The dotted lines, it measures the gray values. So, this is the RGB model. The RGB model, each colors in its primary spectral components. It is its primary spectral components. So, okay, black is at the origin, white is at the corner, farthest from the origin. Okay, and these values are very clear. Okay, inside the, the different colors in this models are the points on or inside the cube. Other different colors. Okay, on the cube or inside the cube. So, what is this RGB? It is of three component images when uh, fed into an RGB monitor, these three images combine on the screen to produce a composite color image. So, okay. First three component images will be created. R image, G image and B image. Th these three colors when we fed it produce a composite color image. The number of bits used to represent each pixel in the number of bits, how many bits we are using, that is called pixel depth. So, you take one RGB image of 8 bit image, means each pixel are represented by 8 bits, that is the depth of the image. Okay, under this uh, condition, the triplet values, so okay, for R 8 bits, G 8 bits, B 8 bits, so totally we get 24 bits, so the depth is 24 bits. So, particular pixel, we need uh, 3 pixel, uh, three values. Each pixel is represented by 24 bits. Each pixel contains R component, G component and B component. So, the number of uh, uh, colors, total number of colors in a 24 bit RGB image is this one. So, or how the RGB model? So, red color, green color, blue color, three components of the color, three color components of the image are given to a color component, uh, color monitor where the composite image will be projected. So, this is the uh, three hidden surface planes in a color cube. So, that side, back side uh, cube, these are the color models where R0, G0 and B0. So, next we will see about the CMY color model. So, CMY and CMYK, you see the cube, how light is like this. So, cyan, magenta and yellow are the secondary colors of light. Most devices, the deposit colored pigments on paper such as the color printers and copiers require CMY data input and perform an RGB to CMY conversion internally. Internally, they need this conversion. Why this conversion? It is performed using a simple operation where the assumption is that all color values have been normalized to the range 0 to 1. So, these are the CMY model and from that we are subtracting from the 1 from RGB values because all the colors are from 0 to 1. So, we are subtracting this values. 
for example c is equal to 1 minus r like this okay the above equation demonstrate that light reflected from a surface coated with a pure cyan does not contain red okay it is free from red similarly magenta does not contain blue and uh, this uh, equation also reveals that rgb values can be obtained quickly from the set of cmi values by subtracting the individual cmi values from the one it can also be easily obtained so these uh, color primary colors we know and if you add these pigments okay you get equal amounts if you mix together you get black color so okay in order to get a true black that is the fourth color black is added giving rise to cmyk model okay black is k for black cmy we know cmyk means black color so thus when publishers talk about four color printing they are referring to the three colors of cmy model plus black next we will go to hsi model so in hsi model rgb and cmy models creating colors and changing from one model to another is a straightforward process these color systems are ideally suited for hardware but these rgb cmy and other similar color models are not suited for describing colors for describing the colors these models are not suited and that are practical for human interpretation for example one does not refer to the color of an automobile by giving the percentage of each of the primaries composing its color uh, we usually if we want to purchase a uh, uh, sari or like we will tell uh, i want to purchase blue color sari but we won't describe na 20% green color 40% cyan 70% magenta like that we won't uh, prescribe so in order to describe as colors we need this hsi model so when we see a color object we describe it by its hue saturation and brightness so if this is the human subject so according to us we see the color by its hue saturation and brightness we know that hue is a color attribute that describes a pure pure color for example pure yellow like that saturation means measure of the degree to which a pure color is diluted by white light okay that hue if you mix a white light it gets uh, down na so okay that is uh, white paint if you mix with a pure red it gets uh, dull okay light red so that is saturation brightness is a subjective descriptor that is impract that is practically impossible to measure we cannot able to measure so it embodies a achromatic notion of intensity and is one of the key factors in describing the color sensation so all that we are discussed it decouples the intensity components also from the color carrying information it is ideally good for image processing so rgb is uh, for image color generation but its use for color description is much more limited we cannot describe rgb model we cannot able to describe the color so this is the hsi color model rgb color image can be viewed as a three monochrome intensity image actually from the input we are getting r component g component and blue component so and so we could extract the intensity from the rgb image so here we are actually extracting the image color components so in this arrangement as shown in the figure the line intensity axis you know you see joining the black and white vertices is vertical you see the where the black and white vertices the center top to bottom it is vertical in this figure so the intersection of the plane with the intensity axis would give us a point with the intensity value in the range 0 to 1 so the saturation of a color increases as a function of distance from the intensity axis so this is the you see the second figure so here the saturation increases as a, if it is distance from the intensity axis okay if you go towards white it is increasing saturation increasing so all points contained in the plane segment defined by the intensity axis and the boundaries of the cube should have the same hue that is cyan in this case points in the plane segment this segment should all uh, have the uh, cyan all colors generated by the three colors in lie in the triangle defined by those colors so here what are all the colors cyan white and black if two of those points are black and white then the third is a color point all points on the triangle would have the same hue because the black and white 
components cannot change the hue. By rotating the shaded plane about the vertical intensity axis, we would obtain different hues. So, what is the conclusion? The hue saturation intensity values required to form the HSI space can be obtained from the RGB cube. We can convert any RGB point to the corresponding point in the HSI model by working out the geometrical formulas. So, next we will see the uh, color transformation. Pseudo color processing is nothing but uh, color transformations. Okay. So, what is pseudo color or false color? It is assigning color value to the gray values based on a specified criteria. So, here it is for human visualization in order to have a good vision enjoyment. So, for human visualization and interpretations of grayscale events in an image or sequence of images. So, first we will do the intensity slicing. There are two methods for pseudo image processing. So, first we will see the intensity slicing. So, the technique of intensity slicing and color coding is one of the simplest examples of pseudo color processing. If an image is interpreted as a 3D function, you see if it is a image is a 3D function, the method can be viewed as one of the placing planes parallel to the coordinate plane of the image. Each plane then slices the function in the area of intersection, slices. Figure shows an example of using a plane at f of x comma y equal to l i to slice the image function into two levels. Here we are uh, slicing a plane is fixed. So, above the plane and below the plane there are two levels actually that is slicing. Next uh, here uh, this is assigned to a function according to this relation where c k represents the color associated color and uh, we are assigning that value to a specific color okay that is c is the color and k th intensity interval. So, between the interval uh, k minus 1 l equal to k minus 1 and l equal to k that is the slicer actually. So, this is the intensity slicing. So, by doing this slicer by placing at one point we get a this color image. So, next we can also have another transformation this are comes under color transformations. So, color transformations next to first is intensity slicing that is one transformation next is gray level to color transformation. So, intensity to color transformations. So, we are taking an image f of x comma y from this three you are taking three components r, g and b. Transformations are capable of achieving a wider range of pseudo color enhancement results than the simple slicing technique. So, here we have a gooder, uh, good vis vision, good image enhancement results. So, the idea underlying this approach is to perform three independent transformations. Here we have to do three transformations on the intensity of any input pixel. The three results are then fed separately into the red, green and blue channels of a color television monitor. So, this is a color television monitor. First, you have to separate the three colors and you have to fed the corresponding color to the color monitor. This method produces a composite image. Finally, mixing of all three will produce a composite image whose color content is modulated by the nature of the transformation functions. So, how it is uh, giving? So, actually we are assigning uh, black color uh, to that a color value we are assigning. So, here how that color value is assigned? It is defined by the transformation functions. So, okay, that is three results are then uh, fed to the separate monitors, three color monitors we are feeding. Okay. So, these are all the transformations, monochrome image, three different gray levels. So, these are uh, three different gray levels we are feeding into the D each to a separate transformation function. So, we are getting the colored image and finally, additional processing is required. And finally, we get the h r of x comma y, h g of x comma y like that. The pseudo color coding approach is used when several monochrome images are available. When we have several monochrome images, then we can do this color transformations. To combine several monochrome images into a single color composite, we can use this color transformation. A frequent use of this approach is in multispectral image processing where different sensors 
produce individual monochrome images each in a different spectral band. A frequent use of this approach is in multispectral image processing where different sensors produce individual monochrome images each in a spectral band. The types of additional processes used can be here in this figure we have additional processes now. So what it is? It can be a technique such as color balancing, combining images and selecting the three images for display based on knowledge about response characteristics of the sensors used to generate the images. Thank you.